This is my Dell XPS 13 and here we have the latest version of Photoshop, Photoshop 2022. My specific XPS is a 2018 model equipped with the upgraded i7, 8500U, 256 gigs of storage and 8 gigs of non-upgradable RAM. First, let's check how much RAM is left. To do that, we're gonna right click on the taskbar and then I'm gonna choose Task Manager. To do that, in Windows 11, I'm using a plugin called Start 11, so you get that right click back like in Windows 10. Here we can see that I have 63% of RAM usage. And now let's check the disk space. I'm gonna open the file explorer here and then this PC and we can see that I have 38.4 gigs left. Now let's close it. Now let's launch Photoshop and then we're gonna check again how much is left. So here we are in Photoshop. Now let's check how much RAM is left. So we're gonna go back to the task manager and here we can see that we are at 80%. So we gained around 17%. I think if I'm not mistaken, because I think that we were at 63, yes, that was where we were. So now let's go back to the file manager and let's check how much storage we have. We have 37.1 gigs left, so Photoshop already used around a gig on the disk. Now, let's open the wallpaper I have here. I didn't add the light uh, beam over here because I prefer it how it looks like this way. So it's intentional, I didn't forget it. Now, let's open Photoshop. Let's go to File, Open Recent, and it should be somewhere here. Here it is, W2229. Not gonna wait. This is a file with a lot of layers, so it can take a while to open. Now let's go back to our RAM usage, and here you can see that the RAM is almost full. So I will not be surprised if the disk space has been reduced because Photoshop is using the disk of my computer as swap memory. So basically swap memory is when your computer runs out of RAM, it's going to use your disk as additional RAM. This one has a downside because your SSD is slower than RAM. That means that you can feel sometimes that your computer slows down. So now let's go back to Photoshop the first we can see that we lost some space again. We were at 37.1 gigs, so here we are already at 35.9 gigs. So let's close that, let's close that. And you can see that it's kind of a heavy project with a lot of layers, but uh, some projects which have uh, way more layers. So here more RAM would be nice, but if we try to uh, hide all the layers by pressing on Alt, you can see that it's still pretty responsive. And uh, now let's do something else. Now let's try to stitch a panorama. So let's close our project because if we leave that open, it's going to fill up the RAM. Now let's go to File, Script, and then load files into a stack. And then we're gonna browse where our files are. And here we have the free pictures for the HDR. Close it and the fans kicked in. Now let's on attempt to automatically align source images, create a smart object, and now let's press OK. And now we're gonna wait until Photoshop is done. And here we can see that our pictures got merged already. I don't think it's already been merged into an HDR. If we can check, maybe it has because we couldn't see the details in the trees back there, so I think it already merged them down. So now uh, we can check again how our RAM is. Here we can see that it's really bad. We have 97% of RAM usage, so if you can, I would upgrade the RAM. But as I mentioned, my PC has non-upgradable RAM. That means I would have to buy a whole new PC. And here I can see that it used additional 4 gigs of my disk space as swap memory. That's also, if we put it in simple terms, it's the scratch disk. The scratch disk and swap memory is the same. So it's using your disk as additional RAM. But as I mentioned, it can slow down your computer. So if you can, I would get 16 gigs of RAM if you're working with large files. So now let's 
try to go back and now let's go to edit and now auto blend layers and now we're gonna choose stack images press on up and now we're gonna see what happens to our disk space if it's going to take even more disk space or if it's going to stay the same I was already able to max out the RAM to 100% but the PC didn't crash because I had enough space on the disk but for stitching large panoramas I tried it before I think it was with 10 or 20 pictures here more RAM is really useful because it took around 30 gigs of my disk which uh, took many many hours to stitch it together so now let's wait until it's done you can see that we have almost the same result as before let's check here oh, I had closed Photoshop with the gestures my bad here we go now let's check that one now here we go and now let's check back our RAM and here we are at 96 so we are almost filling up our RAM which isn't <laughs> that good if I have no disk space left we could end up with a blue screen of death the screen we all love as creators so <laughs> that means that we could lose our work if it's not safe it sucks for all the other persons too if they get a blue screen of death so now let's check our disk space and here we can see that so far we used around 8 gigs of disk space and I didn't do much I just merged the panorama and I opened the wallpaper I made for personal use you can see on my PC now press ctrl D and now if we go to filter and now to camera or filter do some editing to the colors to uh, brightness and whatever we can see what will happen to the RAM and to the disk and someone is lawn mowing outside or what's happening outside now it's a plane a little sports plane or something like that Someone has fun outside, it's really nice weather right now, it's around 30 degrees. Well now let's play a bit around, reduce the highlights. Uh, here you can see that it slows down a bit, maybe that's because the RAM is full or my PC is lacking a bit of performance because the chip inside the PC is already 5 years old. It's a 2018 model but the chip was released in 2017. Now let's add a bit of texture, maybe a bit of vibrance. I like vibrant pictures. Everyone has its own opinion about them. Let's press enter so I can check the RAM. And here you can see that it starts to really slow down. That maybe is because my PC is running out of RAM and it has to use additional disk space. Let's check back the RAM. Uh, 96. So we are really stressing out the RAM. Now let's here we are almost at 10 gigs of RAM used. So here 16 gigs of RAM would be pretty useful. Adobe recommends around uh, 16 gigs of RAM or more. The minimum is 8. Now let's go back here and if we would try to stitch some panoramas the megapixels of the picture would increase and therefore putting more stress on the PC. I would not go above editing I would say 30-40 megapixel pictures with only 8 gigs of RAM. As you can see we are already at 96% of RAM and 1 gigs used by Photoshop. If you're working with really heavy files I would recommend at least 32 gigs of RAM. Swap memory is way slower than physical RAM which slows down your system by a significant amount. If you intend to only do some light picture editing in Photoshop and open only one software at a time, yes you can use Photoshop on only 8 gigs of RAM. On the flip side, if you want to open additional RAM hungry programs like Adobe Premiere which I'm using to edit those videos, you are going to notice a slowdown so I have to close Premiere to open Photoshop which slows down my workflow. I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to make the like button blue. A subscription would be incredible. See you in the next one and take care of yourself.